So kittens, it's Thursday, the 17th of October 2013 to be exact. This is Not A Podcast episode 44 and I am your host, Amanda. You can find me on Ravelry under the username WIT or you can find me on pretty much every other website as So Nitpicky. Plurk, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. So, As those of you who follow me on both Plurk and Twitter know, I am recording a day late because I was waiting on a new USB microphone, which you cannot see, but it's up there next to my webcam now, and based on initial tests last night, it should fix up the sound issues, so you're going to have to let me know if this works out much better than the previous two, and from what I understand, last episode I accidentally deafened you all with the end music, and I apologize for that. I did turn the volume on it way down before saving the podcast, and apparently that wasn't enough. So I am so sorry if I did that. So anyway, welcome and thank you for joining me. This last week has been kind of rough, honestly. It's been full of illness in both of my children and myself, and my children had a very long weekend. One, thanks to the Columbus Day holiday, And then they had a superintendent in service type day Tuesday. So my children were out of school for four days in a row, which was just too long to have them home. By Tuesday, they were climbing the walls and fighting with each other nonstop. And I didn't get much done this week because of it, because I spent so long just trying to break up fights between my two children that I didn't get a lot of crafting done. And then finally yesterday, I was starting to feel better And for the first time in weeks, I felt healthy, and then by last night, my throat got that itch in it again, and I woke up this morning congested. My voice may sound a little bit rough now. I've got some slight buildup in my throat again, and apparently I'm going back into having another cold. I was going to take time during the first part of this podcast today to talk to you about how I was going to Rhinebeck, but that has changed again as of this morning, now that the budget has passed, money has reopened for trading, and my husband has been told that it's a more than 95% chance at this point that he will be sometime out of my house in the next like 72 hours. So I can't risk going out of town Friday night and through Saturday because he could be called up to leave at any time. So them's the breaks, it happens. I'm a little disappointed, but unless he's deploying. I'm hoping there will be next year. So anyway, let's see what else is there. There's not too much else in news. I am currently working on the back end of setting up a fiber shop, which I'm hoping to get running probably early next year consistently, but I'm hoping to have a few updates before then. I will be attempting to dye yarn. I will do Uh, I'll show previews and stuff here, but for now I'm not going to say too much about it. I have a name, I've started setting up PayPal, websites, I've got to get a bank account, I've got to get a federal tax ID number. There's a lot of work that goes into it when you do these things, so I'm trying to get it all set up and done correctly, as well as getting myself set up in the correct direction to be able to more regularly update once I want to get going. So definitely be watching for that, and hopefully once I have a logo and everything, I will start talking about it a little bit more, but in the coming weeks you'll see stuff about it. So otherwise today I have some works in progress. I have a little bit of spinning to show you, Stitcher's Corner, and I will talk to you about the Little York Fiber Fest that I went to last weekend and a couple of the things that I got there. So let's go into the show. First up is works in progress. I have been continuing to work on the Lucy's Owl that I showed you all last week for my neighbor's son. That pattern is by my friend Rachel Miller. And I have been working on a worsted weight one in the Knit Pick Swish Tonal in Heirloom, as well as Knit Pick Swish in Maze, and Martha Stewart Soft Wool in White. So far I've got the body. I have this habit of where I like to put the eyes too low on this. I really should have put them up about a half an inch, but I think it'll work. He's uh, cute. Got nice big eyes. I think these are 12 millimeter safety eyes from the 6060 shop on Etsy. I've got the nose on. It's all ready to go. I like how the yarn pooled and it's striped. It ended up being very attractive. Heirloom is this 
colorway that's apparently based on tomatoes, I would guess, but it's got beautiful golds and red oranges and a little bit of yellow in it. It's very nice. I finished the body. It's about ready to go. And in the same time, I have gotten both of the legs done. So I've still got to get these stuffed. The feet get stuffed and you sew up the back and the toes will eventually stay down. I've got all these ends here. Pasta spaghetti. And yeah, I just have to do the wings on it. And I'm waiting to hear what my neighbor had because I believe she went in yesterday for an induction finally. She was 41 weeks. So I want to hear what the baby was because I'd really like to make something, even if it's a small one for the baby too. The baby's getting that sweet sweater I showed you. I'm not sure why Tala's freaking out. I'm so What's going on? You're going to be okay. Sorry about that. The last couple of times I've given her Pizzle, she starts freaking out and whining, and I think she gets upset and she can't figure out where to eat it, so she's trying to complain to me to tell her what to do. Anyway, I'm almost done with it. I'm going to do one for the baby, and I'm still thinking that this yarn may be my best choice. It's mostly browns with little shots of purple and kind of berry pink in it. My color is really bad today. I'm going to attempt to color correct this in the editing process. So if the colors look okay, and it doesn't sound like what I'm describing, it's probably because I fixed it. But it's been raining the last couple of days here. It's very overcast, and this is the best the light's been all day, so I decided to go for recording. My other work in progress was another one that I had shown you last week, and I had barely gotten cast on and that was my Knit Picks Felici spooky self-striping socks. I have been taking a very long time on these because I'm trying to decide exactly what I want to do. I decided to do the mirrored shaped like my feet toes so here they are. You can kind of see there uh, there's a little increase here. Oh goodness there's all these tails. A little increase here and then it's straight and then it's more increases there and I did the opposite on the other sock. They're not going to be quite matching. They're going to be a couple rows off the entire time. That doesn't bother me too much. I think it's kind of cute. And now my big problem is, is what am I going to do with the sock? I had thought about doing vanilla bean flecking a la Emily from What You're Swatchin's Vanilla Bean Socks. I had considered doing like I do when I've done some of my other socks, doing a simple two by two cable. And I've been looking at lace patterns that mimic ghosts. And I don't wanna do a full sock of the ghost lace, but I'm currently thinking about inserting a panel, doing some sort of a zigzaggy rickrack looking cable. There are several free patterns that have those. I think the seaweed socks um, from Lemnit Crochet, I think that's her name, it does the same thing. I'm still kind of on the fence about what I want to do with them. I don't want to do anything too time consuming, but I'm not sure I want to do just plain vanilla socks yet. So those are my big works in progress that I worked on this week. The next thing is spinning a yarn. I'm still working on the same thing I was last week. I really wanted to start something on my Turkish spindle, the new one I showed you guys last week, but I'm trying to finish up things before I start new cast-ons. So, I am still working on my Hanks in the Hood center pull bat in the neon tetra colorway. You can see now that the cop is a little bit fatter than the last time you all saw it. Last time it was about this thickness here, right around the shaft. And now I have a good amount of more fiber. Um, it's still pretty fine. When it's three plied like I plan to, I'm going to chain ply it. It should end up being, I'd say, in the DK to maybe worsted weight range. There isn't anything too exciting to show on it yet. I'm still in this strip of blue. If you remember from last week, the center here is still blue, and eventually I'm going to be pulling out into these oranges and pinks again. So I'm hoping to maybe find a little bit more time to spin in the next coming week and I'll have a little bit more to show. So let's see. The next thing is Stitcher's Corner. 
Last week I had been almost done with my dessert sampler by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery and I am fully done with that now. I did not bring it over here, I forgot to and I'm not going to go get it. I can show pictures if anyone's really curious but I finished that up and I finally started my Halloween spooky sampler. So I'm going to bring that over here and show you all. This one is a slightly different style that Amanda and Ashley are trying out for their new samplers. As you can see, I've got the grid in. I've done the center, which is an owl motif, always for owls. And I've started working on the border lace, which is quite tricky, but it's nice at the same time. I'm, I've decided that I'm gonna break the lace up and do two to three strands at a time on it while filling in the squares so that I don't kind of get lace exhaustion. So far, I'm really, really liking the pattern, and I'm liking the new style for the 2013 to 2014 holiday samplers. I can't say much more about it. That is the uh, Picture This Plus Legacy Linen in the Laguna colorway, I think, Lugana? Or it might be Lugana Linen in the Legacy colorway. It's a very pretty um, parchment color, and that is the second time I've ordered it. If any of you have wondered, I have never found that original packet of linen that disappeared. I'm still looking for it everywhere and quite a bit more now because this linen, if we could talk about this for a second, this linen is amazing. If any of you out here are working on this same sampler and you're working in the same fabric, it seems to be really, really popular. It's thick and it's plush and it's really easy to stitch on compared to the Cashel linen we've been using for the last ones. And I love it. I'm looking forward to having scraps to do little bits of um, stitching on, maybe even going to one by one and doing teeny tiny stitching to put into project bags and things. And I really like it. I think in the future I will be substituting it for projects that don't call for it. So other than that kittens, the only thing left is stash enhancement. And today with Stash Enhancement, I'm going to talk just a tiny bit about where I was on Saturday in Preble, New York, which is just south of Syracuse. There is a fiber festival called the Little York Festival Fiber Fest, and it's not too big. It's at a kind of a museum barn building that they seem to use for lots of different fests and meetups. And there were, I think, maybe two dozen vendors there. And it was actually quite a bit of fun. I really liked going. It's about 90 mu minutes away from me. Pardon me, my nose is just starting to um, stuff up a little bit on me again. Mm. Anyway, so we ended up going last Saturday. And I had almost forgot. I thought it was this weekend. And then I realized I was off by a week for all my fiber festivals in New York this year. So we ended up going and it was a little later in the day than I originally had intended to go when I went, but I'm glad I did. We ended up seeing some very nice young adult Icelandic Shetland sheep. There were lots of vendors there with fleeces and different types of roving and bats. Um, there was a lot of scratchier wool breeds there, but there were lots of Angora bunnies. There was lots of alpaca. And it was really fun to go there and to talk to the people. And there were lots of vendors there with spinning wheels. There were a couple people who did pottery and woodworking. There was a maple sugar, maple product vendor. We ended up getting some of those maple sugar cubes that are shaped like the leaves. Those were good. And yeah, it was just, it was a really good time. And while we were there, I decided to pick up a couple of things. And I'm gonna show those to you. I may not have the business cards for these people, because I didn't prepare that well, but if you like the crinkles. But I ended up getting a couple different things. The first I'm gonna show you, the woman, I know, up oh, here's the card, called herself Pear Tree. Her name is Holly. Holly was a very lovely person. Loved talking to her, she was very friendly. She was there with all sorts of different types of these little bumps of fiber. I'm not sure what to call this, if this would be roving or what it is, but it's in strips and then wound in a ball. And I ended up picking out this two ouncer of Ramboulet, which is new to me. Sometimes it's called French Merino. The color is a little washed out when I bring it up, but you can get a better idea of what it is. It's teals and greens, and there's a little bit of black. It's really beautiful. And it reminds me of some of the first yarn I ever bought when I made um, 
my voodoo mitts. They were made out of a colorway very similar to this. And I mean, there's even little pops of bright green in the middle there. It's extremely soft and squishy. Two ounces of fiber prepped, however, this is prepped is huge. And I really enjoyed her booth and I'm hoping to be able to go back again next year and maybe get a few more things. But this was, most of these fibers were really well priced. They were in the two to three dollars per ounce range. So I mean, little six dollar lovely here. It was fun and yeah, I'm really enjoying that. I'm hoping to start spinning some of these up a little bit faster than some of my other stuff. And then the other one I have in this bag is from a fiber mill that's local to us here that I'm hoping to maybe talk to more in the future called Salt City Fiberworks Yarn and Fiber Mill. They do custom processing. I don't know if they spin yarn though, but they do seem to do fiber prep. And when I was up in their booth, something that caught my eye was a fiber blend of Merino and Surrey Alpaca, and that's this. It's so soft and it's like this mossy army green. Oh. Sorry, <laughs> I just, I want to squish it and cuddle it. This looks to be about the same size as this one, but in fact, they're very different. This is four ounces, whereas this one is two. So I'm not sure again on fiber prep and how it works, but it's just, it's so fluffy. And when I was looking at it, it's gonna draft really nice and I think it's gonna draft pretty fine. I got enough to theoretically make a hat or something out of it because I can be kind of fiber sensitive to alpaca. I'm hoping that I can wear Surrey though because if I can I might talk to them in the future about a sweater's quantity of this fiber and maybe not dyed, maybe undyed so that I can dye it myself later. And then the main reason I had gone to the Little York Fiber Festival was to check out the booth of Spun Right Round Fiber, which should be no surprise to anyone. I have lots of Renee's fiber. I love her stuff. I love her Etsy shop, which the card is having a very, the camera's having a very hard time focusing on the card. Spun Right Round. I love Renee's work. And unlike a lot of the other fiber, her stuff is a bit more expensive, but I really wanted to see her in person. She started carrying fabric in her shop too, so I got a fat quarter of this uh, gray and blue fox, which I've been eyeing online. And then I got two other little goodies from her. First was her Superwash Wool Singles yarn, which is about 400 yards to 4 ounces in her Invader colorway, which is based off of Invader Zim. I'm a big fan of the show. I mean, the, the colors in here are beautiful. She had a couple fibers that were like this too, but I kind of wanted to buy something pre-made that would be easy enough. And I mean, this was one that she must have had in the shop because she's got her um, spun right round Etsy.com, her Etsy label on there. And I'm thinking about doing a honey cowl, the pattern by Madeline Tosh in this. I think that the color variegation will lend quite well to that. And I picked up one more little thing from her which is I got a four ounce fiber braid of BFL in the parakeet colorway. And I'm thinking about trying to spin this one really thin and make socks for my sister out of it, because this is totally a my sister colorway. It's, uh, here we go, that's much better, isn't it? Not in the plastic. It's these beautiful blue greens with yellows and taupe and beige. I'm not a fan of birds as pets, but I do like the colors that they are. So I thought that that was fun, and I spent quite a bit more money there than at either of the other booths, because like I said, her stuff is uh, considerably more pricey, more in the 4 to $5 per ounce range versus the $3 that the other two things were. So I had a very good time and I plan to go again next year because even though it was small it was interesting to be there and to talk to some of the people and I don't know just get a feel for what a little fiber fest is like. Other than that kittens I can't think of anything I need to talk to you about. I am hoping to avoid any further sickness and hopefully next week I will record on Wednesday like I normally will. As I said before, please let me know if the sound on this one is better for you. I'm hoping it will be. 
and I hope you're all well. Take care of yourselves, kittens, and I will talk to you next week. Bye.